Hi, I'm Clay, KO4MEX, and I'm here with Rob, KB8UEY, and we're here at the Dayton Amateur Radio Club house. <laughs> um, thanks for having me here Not tonight. a problem. Uh, we're about to take a tour. Before it gets dark, we're going to take a look at some antennas and get a little bit of history on the place. So you're watching Classic Clay Presents. So everything on this main tower here is all basically repeater stuff, except for a couple of verticals that we can use for inside. And then we got a four band parallel dipole there that goes uh, 30, 40, 60, and 80. It's just shy of 60 feet up. How long has this club been here? How long have y'all had the towers up? Well, the main tower's been up since the uh, since originally a microwave ran the site for Department of Defense uh -huh. and then handed off to at and and then decommissioned in the late 70s and we bought it in 81. Okay. And when we get inside, there's a picture of the original building. It was just from basically that rain gutter over to the corner. And then we added on a hallway and a couple of bathrooms shortly after that. And then in 2012, broke ground on the expansion and added 5,600 square foot to the building. Okay. Very good. About 85 or 86, the two additional room towers were added. The southmost tower is 120 feet, the west tower is 90. The main tower with the additional rune out the top and the station master sitting on the top comes out at about 195 feet to the tip of the antenna. Wow. We were just outside of where we weren't going to be able to do that because of the pattern for right path. Uh huh. Very cool. On top of the main tower is a step IR monster beam. Below it on the ring rotor is a 36 element 2 meter beam. Uh huh. On the west tower, the very top antenna is a 432 horizontal. I don't know how many elements. Uh, it was put up in 2007 and I had taken a hiatus from the club and came back right after that was put up. And then below it's a Force 12 4DX. Uh, the part in the middle is a 10 through 20 log periodic and then the outer two elements is a 40 meter add-on kit giving us a two meter, a, sorry, a two element 40 meter rotatable dipole array at just a hair over 90 feet. Below it, on a standoff arm, you'll see an eight-loop uh, UHF dipole array. That's actually a DMR repeater that's housed here on site. And then slightly below that, at the 55-foot mark, there's a pulley and a 160-meter double bazooka. And right below it, about six inches below, a 75-meter inverted bead. Oh, wow. Okay. There's a standoff arm with a pulley up by that eight loop UHF dipole array. Uh huh. And that's where the feed point for the 117 foot in fed is that runs across to the standoff arm on the other tower. And below that standoff arm is an additional 75 meter inverted V that's at about 90 feet. Uh, the one on the west tower is broadside to Europe, the one on the south tower is broadside to the Caribbean. Okay. Uh, that was an impromptu addition during CQ Worldwide because we were having trouble hearing the Caribbean. Uh huh. On the roof of the barn is a Cushcraft R8. Uh, it actually is needing replaced. The 40 meter portion of it has gone bad. But that antenna was originally purchased to be used three days a year for the Hamvention Special Event Station in like 1994. Really? And then it was sitting in the barn not doing anything, and we're like, going to put it up. Yeah. And it worked great, and then just 
in the last year or so, the 40 meter portion went bad. I think there's probably a trap up there that just got water in it. Uh huh. It, it happens. Uh, lower on the roof of the barn is an arrow corner reflector antenna that's rotated 90 degrees from the way you would normally put one up. Uh, the hope was that that would uh, It has not worked out as expected. <laughs> it was kind of an experiment. Right. Uh, so we're probably going to turn that back the way it normally would be and uh, use it for some FM stuff. We'll walk around the other side of the building. Really. All right. Right up here, Cushcraft R6. So the R8 does 6 through 40. R6 does 6 through 20. At the top of the original commercial portion of the tower, on one of the standoffs, is a... Uh... I'll get the brand. Uh, it's an X50. Diamond X50. Or Comet. Ah, heck, I forget. Anyway, it's an X50. I remember that part. That's what we're using for APRS at the moment. Uh-huh. Prior to it getting put up, this was our APRS antenna. <laughs> so we had a little bit of an increase in profile on our APRS. Yeah. Version. And then on a standoff arm there just above the ice bridge is a disc cone and another one out here on the mast that every time I stand it up and get a good wind and it blows cockeyed in. And those are good from you know, just around 10 meters all the way up to 1.2 gig. Right. Minus a little portion, about 700. That's about the only spot that it gets back. Sweet. Eventually, this is going to be our big satellite station. Uh-huh. Uh, we've got the antennas and the booms and everything in the barn just one of those we haven't had time to get everything put together. Right. We're going to have uh, the 2.4, 1.2, 70 centimeter, and 2 meter all on there with the preamps, the polarization changing, all the fancy stuff. Mm -hmm. And here in a minute we'll step in the barn and I'll be able to show you the 2 and the 440 hanging from the uh, rafters in there before we get a look at the uh, repeater closet. Excellent. Oh, wow. Yeah. So there'll be a fiberglass boom up there. Out on the one end will be the 2 meter. On the other end will be the 440. And then closer into the center will be a 1.2 and a 2.4. Uh-huh. And it'll all have azimuth and elevation control box interface with the computer. So it'll look at that day's Keplerian data. You figure out which satellite you want, and it'll track it from first acquisition until loss of sight. Wow. <laughs> That's why it's taken a little while to get everything put together. Uh -huh. It's got a lot of stuff in it. Right. <laughs> a little more than just going out and throwing up a vertical. Uh-huh. Definitely. said earlier on the way here I'm going on a field trip it really is yeah that's too cool
Now we'll go in where it's a little warmer. Wow. So the two meter machine that we were talking on, here is all of the control components. So all of our link receivers, the voter, the actual controller, backup transmitter, the duplexers and everything are there. A UHF remote in case we have to do some type of control work on it and we can't get in on two. And then it links from here down to Miamisburg, Ohio, not too far from where you guys are staying right now, uh -huh. uh, to where the transmitter is actually located right near the intersection of 75 and 725. Okay. Uh, if you've been getting off the highway there and you see the big white building, it's got the logo on it for Kettering Health Network. Mm -hmm. It's actually on the roof of that building. Okay, that's right up the road. Yeah, it's uh, second or third highest point in the county. Mm -hmm. And then it's a, I forget if it's a five or a nine story building there. I've worked at so many different sites. I can't keep them all straight, but uh, damn good coverage there. Uh -huh. so. The rack next to it is a two and a 440 D-Star repeater set that are housed here locally on site. And, oh yeah, it's got the call sign right there on the rack. That's the W8HEQ repeaters. And then we've got W8RTL, which is the other D-Star repeaters that Dara runs that are actually located out of channel 16's transmit tower out in West Dayton. Okay. And those along with several other area repeaters uh, run through a combiner and use a shared transmit antenna that's well over 700 feet. Uh -huh. And that site is the highest point in the county. Uh, thus why when you're driving around you'll notice there's this cluster of TV towers out there. Right. Everybody wanted to put their towers there. Uh -huh. And yeah, in this room and the HF room, we've got patch panels. Like at above the line is antennas, below the line is radios. In the other room, there will also be an area between a couple of lines that is our, or actually in the other room, the top half is antennas. And then the next two rows down is radios. And then the bottom two rows is amplifier inputs and outputs because we've got two legal limit amplifiers in the other room. Mm, okay. But if you look up overhead, every line coming in here runs through lightning protection. Very good. And our central ground for the entire facility is right there. That line goes down and out the wall of the ground rod that's right out back. Uh huh. And grounding your station is very important. Yeah. <laughs> You know, with those towers out there, we take hits every storm we get. Really? Uh, sometimes it doesn't do anything. Other times it pops a polyphaser or two. Mm -hmm. um, but we had one of our club members that lived in the housing development just north of us. He would sit on his back patio during a thunderstorm and watch <laughs> the lightning strike in the towers. Oh, wow. But you could sit in here and actually operate during a thunderstorm. And other than the noise floor going up, uh -huh. you're fine. Uh, we did take a hit a few years ago that did $32,000 damage, but it came in through a mesh node here on site that did not follow our lightning protection stipulations. Oh, no. Used some consumer grade lightning protection that didn't protect anything, mm -hmm. and it got into their equipment, backfed through our network, got over into the server closet and back out into multiple things in the building. Oh. That sounds expensive. Uh, it was I couldn't imagine. 16 months to get everything fixed. Uh, this right here that you're focused in on right now is an amateur TV uh, demonstration station and looks like they've been adding some additional stuff here because that Tektronics box down below wasn't there last week. Uh, this radio that somebody has turned off is an amateur P25 radio. Uh, we've got a group here in the area that has 
started taking uh, Motorola Quantar commercial UHF repeaters and setting them up in the amateur range. Huh. And I think right now they're up to five or six machines from as far south as Lebanon to as far north as Sydney that are linked together right now. <laughs> yeah, it's this pinhole camera right here is what they're oh. using. They do have a way that they can use this pan tilt zoom over here. Uh huh. That's very cool. Uh, our APRS station used to be that, and then when it died, it was that, and now it is this. Uh, I think it's running about 70 watts. Mm hmm. Uh, and it is set up as an eye gate, so most of the stuff that you will see on APRS.FI from the area, it's piped out to the internet through here. Not so much. I'm having a hard time wrapping my brain around all of this. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we haven't even got to the HF room yet. So this room's set up basically for VHF, UHF. Uh -huh. uh, we do have a pair of FT736s. Uh, we've got a ICOM communications receiver. There's a hole right here because the TS2000 got stone deaf and had to be sent in for some service. That's our satellite station. And here's your uh, azimuth and elevation control. And this little box here interfaces with it. And with the software, we'll take the data and track the satellite. Wow. Uh, we do have up here, this little conglomeration is an echo link node for our 220 machine. Uh -huh. uh, we don't actually have, or didn't have internet access where the 220 machine was located at the time. Mm -hmm. So they put it here. Now that it's been moved, we do have it there, but... The guy that maintains this literally lives less than a mile from here, so we just left it here because everything's already set up. We just had to reposition the beam when we moved the repeater. And if right. something goes bad with it, he can drive up here in like two minutes and fix it. Mm -hmm. Like the other day, I walked in here and the UPS had gone bad. And I'm like, hey, Jim, your UPS is in here screaming. He goes, okay, I'll be there in a minute. <laughs> <clears throat> now where the magic happens. Unfortunately, we have another hole because uh -oh. behind you, you see the box that is holding uh. our 7600 <laughs> right now Ooh. that is getting ready to go to the ICOM Repair Center in Michigan because really? during CQ Worldwide, its output power went to 18 watts. Oh, no. Middle of the contest, it just went, I'm done. So, literally yanked it out. I threw my 7300 in there and we continued the contest. But at this position, we've got the 87A, so we're able to run full legal limit. How much does that weigh? Uh, it's probably in the 40, 42 pound range. Okay. It weighs almost as much as the power transformer in the 9500 over here. Right. Both of these positions have got an AT2K, so we can tune pretty much any antenna we hook up to because those things will tune a gutter. Of course, you know that concept. <laughs> <laughs> and here's what I was talking about. Antennas, radios, and then amplifier. And every cable is color-coded so that when this poor schmuck that's talking has to go hunting in the ceiling for a cable to fix something, Every five or six feet, that color code is on that cable, and I can lay my hand on the right cable anywhere in this building. Yes. <laughs> it takes a little extra time in the beginning, but it saves a lot of headache down the road. Absolutely. And for this room, so I didn't have to run all of the cables over to the other room. Oh, let's see it. Here's another grounding plate. Yeah. Everything in here is tied to it, and then a line goes over to the other panel. 
So everything is tied to the same ground. It just, in this room, goes to a different panel first. Uh-huh. Yeah, I've got the display for the weather station in both rooms. Ignore the wind direction right now. In the last week, that has stopped working. Literally, I sat there looking outside. It's changing direction, and it's not pointed anywhere near what that says it is. So something in there is not right. But that weather station's been in use since 2006. So really? It's about due for a replacement. This empty position was a TS-570. Uh, up in the air what the plan is going to be right now, but there will be a different radio there soon. Uh, and then got the 10 Tech Omni 7, I believe it is there. Yes. When, when did you all have the last contest? Well, I was doing CQ Worldwide CW over the weekend. Were you really? Yep. And I'll be in here doing the 160 contest this weekend. And then over at this position, we've got the 7610, and it is tied with the 9500 sitting over there to the side. And the way it's set up, we've got the ability to hook any radio in this building to any antenna. Oh, really? Yes. Thus wow. the patch panels. Uh -huh. There's two positions on this panel that go to the panel in the VHF UHF room, and two positions that go back to the classroom where we've got an additional panel. Uh huh. And then likewise, there's two positions over in the VHF, UHF room that go back to the classroom. So we can literally cross over from any room. So we can hook any radio to any antenna, depending on what the needs are. Uh, the person teaching a CPR and first aid class to our uh, venture crew saw the note in here and said, oh, they're just doing that to try to scare people. Magnetic contact switch hooked to the fire alarm system triggers a supervisory. And when that goes into the central station, they have a screen that pops up that says they've accessed the AED, mm -hmm. contact Huber Heights Fire, and send medics. Mm -hmm. Wow. That's smart, too. I don't know, I might have been a fire inspector for 14 <laughs> of my 18 years of fire. Uh, really? <laughs> I know the average person is going to remember call 911. Or grab the AED. Mm -hmm. Probably not both. Right. So if they at least grab the AED, help will be coming. This is where we have our board meetings, our planning council meetings, and then also when we're doing VE sessions, we do all of our testing in, or you know, the grading of the tests in here, mm -hmm. and inputting into the. Uh, system for Laurel VEC so it can be uploaded to the FCC, generate the CSCE here, go back out and give people the good news or the bad news, depending on how it goes. But when we did the building expansion, it put us up to seven different HVAC units. <laughs> so... About once every three months, I'm going through about $100 with air filters. Mm -hmm. The rack to the right is all of the lighting and AV controls. And that should have come on, but it didn't. That's a lot happening there for lights. Yeah. The rack to the right, or yeah, to the left is lighting and AV. To the right is actually the server that we process all of our, or do our uh, Hamvention webpage on. Okay. So if you ever gone to hamvention.org, your electrons made it here. <laughs> <laughs> and then, of course, all of our internet comes in through here, phones, everything else, and it's distributed out throughout the building. All right, so there's the foot pedal, there's the microphone. There's Virgil. Oh, we 
from him a little bit. A little bit. I'd say go, go ahead and do you and then I'll... Kilo, Oscar 4, Mike, Echo, X-Ray, Portable, Ohio. That's nice. Get set up here on Let's see if we heard you. Yeah, hit it and say Roger, Roger. Roger, Roger. All right, we're checking into the 3905 Century Club 40 meter early net. Kilo Bravo 8, United Echo Yankee Portable at W8 Bravo India fixed. External speakers meant for, you know, that are deep like that. Mm -hmm. Is there a difference in how they're built compared to... Well, that depth is so that the sound can project out uh -huh. the right way. Because you can take that same speaker and put it in a shallower box, mm -hmm. but the sound is going to be completely different. Right. I'm using a surround sound speaker, a Yamaha. It's like, it was meant to be the center speaker, so it's gotcha. the same width as my tuner, actually. So it's, uh, look, it fits well, but it, it sounds real good. It's got some bass and depth. I was just wondering, like, because, you know, I'm happy with it. Would it, how much would it uh, benefit me to get an expensive deal like that, you know? If you got good sound coming out of it and it's working well with your ears, don't screw with it. For years, I used an old stereo speaker from my grandma and grandpa's stereo. Mm hmm yeah, you know, wooden bookshelf stereo speaker. I, it just finally fell apart because it was made of press board. Right. But that thing had great sound. It didn't cost me a damn thing. Of course, nowadays I'm just using the speaker in the 7300 most of the time. Right. The only problem is it's just like this. It's up on top. So, I'll, I'll take something for you, Ralph Coleman. Kilo Golf 8, Whiskey Lima from Kilo Oscar 4, my Gecko X ray. I have you at a 5.555. Five, over. Uh, copy the 44. Thank you for the contact. Roger, Roger, Victor Echo 3, Yankee Whiskey November from Kilo Oscar 4, Mike Echo X ray. Uh, copy the 5 9, you are also 5 9, over. Roger, Roger, copy the also 5 9. W5 UOT. Copy the 5 9, you are a 5 7 57, over. Rhode Island. Kilo, Oscar 4, Mike, Echo, X-Ray, Portable, Ohio. Uh, portable, uh, you 5'9", you 5'9", Roger. Roger, Roger, you're also 5'9". I think you're very much. Line number? Uh, 22. Line 22. I think you're very much. Okay, I'm back to that. Back to that. Thank you, Kilo, Echo, 1, Alpha, Front. Back to that. I don't think I've worked them before. I mean, I didn't know 40 acted like that during the colder months. Because I was wondering, you know, 
just a couple months ago it was fine and reliable, you know? Well, and like I said on the repeater, part of it is once the UV goes away that's ionizing the atmosphere, mm -hmm. it has less hours of ionization, so it takes a lot less to dissipate. Yeah. So like in the summertime, you got 16, 17 hours of daylight, it takes half the night for that shit to dissipate and for it to stretch out. Mm -hmm. Now it's like, gone. Mm -hmm. I think he was calling? calling me. I think he's calling me. Alpha Charlie 2, Mike Tango, uh, from Kilo Oscar 4, Mike Echo X-Ray. Uh, numbers, numbers. Five nine. Five nine, yeah. I uh, copy the five nine. I have you at a forty four four four. Over. Well, you went up now. Yep. Hey, Roger, roger, copy the 5-9, you're also, also 5-9 maximum, over. Thank you, Virgil. This is Kilo Oscar 4, Mike. Echo X-Ray, up for grabs, up for grabs. Whiskey 2, Whiskey Charlie Mike. Whiskey 2, Whiskey Charlie Mike. I have you at a 5-9 maximum. 5-9, over. Well, thanks. Uh, Kilo Oscar 4, uh, Mike, Echo X-Ray, also 5-9, also 5-9 from Whiskey 2, Whiskey Charlie Mike. Great signal. Roger, roger, likewise, this is KO4 MEX back to net. All right, well, we hope you've enjoyed uh, the tour of the W8BI Clubhouse, and a big thanks to Rob for hosting us tonight, and uh, we had a good time on the Century Club. I came out with eight contacts, portable, so very good. We'll be looking forward to the next time, but until then, 73.